So I really, really like movies, like kind of a lot. I mean, seriously, just take a look at my DVD collection. I guess a few of these are my mom's DVDs, but just a few of them. I mean, I've been collecting movies since forever. I've got all the DVDs, I've got VHS tapes for Pete's sake. And well, check out my iTunes collection. It's pretty exhaustive. Even all the TV shows I have. And I know what you're thinking, Parker, what the heck? That is just an overload. Why would you buy all these movies and then buy them again on digital? That, that's just crazy. And it kind of is, but I'm not exactly doing that. Now, you see a lot of these movies, especially these days, come with digital copies. Now, even with Movies Anywhere, it's like the most brilliant thing ever. You get a, a Vudu copy, you get an Amazon Prime copy, you get an iTunes copy, a Disney copy. You just get one of those copies somewhere, attach it to your Movies Anywhere account, and then you have it everywhere else. That's kind of amazing. But for those movies that don't come with digital copies, how do you get them onto iTunes? Let's talk about that. All right, so here's what you're gonna need. First of all, you need your favorite movies, and TV shows. It doesn't matter if they're Blu-ray or DVD, this will work for all of them. You also need a disk drive. This one is an external Blu-ray drive. Uh, modern Macintosh computers do not have a built-in disk drive. I'll leave a link in the description below. This one is actually theoretically capable of reading and writing to 4K Blu-ray discs, but the software doesn't yet exist. So the support isn't quite there just yet. You'll also need a handful of applications. For the best experience possible, you'll need these three applications, Make MKV, Handbrake, and Subler. So in the old days with my old iMac, I could just get away with Handbrake. Effectively what Handbrake is, is a video conversion tool. And finally, after like, like nine or 10 years of being in beta, they finally have a 1.0 release which is really awesome. This is a free application and really all it does is just convert video files for you. You used to be able to just pop in the disc and Handbrake would read the disc, decode the disc, and rip the, the TV episodes or the movie directly from the disc. But I lost a piece of software or a plugin or something because it doesn't let me do that anymore. Well, it does, but it looks like this. So that's unacceptable, obviously. Also, it won't rip Blu-rays. And that's where Make MKV comes in. Now, Make MKV is also a free software, sort of. You can try it free for 30 days, and after 30 days, you can just delete it and download it again. So if you want to own it full time, and you can do that by purchasing it, it's so worth it. The developer has steady updates, so when new Blu-rays come out that might not be able to read, within a week or two, there will be an update that can read the new copyright codec or whatever. All right, so here's how it works. We'll take our DVD, launch Make MKV, put the DVD in the disk drive, click the disk, and it'll start reading it. And there you go, there's the movie. Now you'll see down here it says, title number 15 has a length of 80 seconds, which is less than the minimum title length of 1200 seconds and therefore skipped. Basically, it will scan everything on the disk, but I have a, a special settings right here that limits the minimum time length, which basically 20 minutes. Anything less than 20 minutes will be skipped. And I did that very much intentionally just because usually there's a whole list of things I have to uncheck, 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 because I don't want all the bonus features, I just want the movie. And I set it to 20 minutes because the minimum length for a TV show is 21 minutes. So it just works out really easily for both movies and TV shows. So we have our movie selected. Now we, uh, need to tell it where to save it to. And then I have a, a, a folder right here, Z, add to iTunes. And then we're also going to, this is Spider-Man 2, so we'll click forward slash Spider-Man 2. Make MKV, confirm right here that yes, you do want to create that folder. There it goes, off to work. All right, so here we have all of the MKV files. Now, if you have VLC Media Player, you could be done at this step if you want to. All you have to do is rip everything to an MKV file. And of course, the VLC player, which is available for free, Mac, PC, everywhere. It is the best media player in my opinion, although I really like iTunes because of the iTunes store, and of course, I, I need iTunes. See, it's 21 gigabytes, so that's pretty big, but if you're a video purist, you're gonna want the highest resolution possible and the highest bit rates possible, etc. Here's a 1080p file playing back on a 5K screen. That, that looks pretty good to me. Right? Here we have a DVD MKV from uh, Community, one of my favorite TV shows ever. You can see it's a little pixelated, but a teeny tiny DVD quality 480p stretched out to a 5K screen. But as you can see, 
Yeah, there's a little bit of artifacts, there's a little bit of noise, but it looks good. So you could be done here if you want, but there is another step, and that's to basically compress and convert these MKV files to make them a little bit smaller. So we just ripped our movie from Make MKV, and now it's in this folder here. So we've got Geostorm, which is uh, <laughs> kind of hilarious and epic, uh, by the way. So I recommend it if you're a fan of disaster movies. Anyway, we see here that we have a, a video size of 26 gigabytes. So uh, we could be done. We have the movie right here and uh, we can watch it in its fullness and uh, we'll have a good time. But for those of you who don't have eight terabyte hard drives with all that wiggle room and stuff, you're gonna wanna convert it to a smaller file size. So that's where Handbrake comes in. Now Handbrake has been around for uh, more, I don't know, a decade? It's been, it's been a while. Where are you, Geostorm? Right there, so we'll just select Geostorm. Click open, and there's a couple of settings. Most of the default settings are the only ones you should use. There's Apple TV 3, which effectively is 1080p, and then there's Apple TV 2, which is effectively 720p, and we'll talk about that later. I'm fine with 1080p. I have the storage to, to you know, make that work, and uh, we'll rename it just Geostorm. We have this, of course, in our iTunes folder, within the Add to iTunes folder, and within that, it has its own special folder, Converted. There, so we'll go ahead and just click Start. We've got the Apple TV 3, selected and start now the other cool thing about handbrake is you can create your own custom presets so you can change uh, resolutions and frame rates and bit rates and all that stuff uh, but honestly apple tv 2 and 3 are the only ones that i really use um, although i do uh, for dvd rips though i do use high profile to get the biggest quality possible so down here at the bottom it gives you a rough estimated time of arrival eta one hour and 40 minutes so we've got the Apple TV uh, 3 preset all done. We've got the Apple TV 2 720p preset done. And now we've got a high profile. So far, it takes about the same amount of time as the movie itself to re-encode. So that's a little bit of time. Uh, although keep in mind, this is a, a spinning hard drive and it's saving the file to the same hard drive. So that probably has a, some pretty bad performance issues and I'm gonna need to figure that out. So one thing you can see here is you can actually queue up your information. So I have different, uh, the three different presets. Now you do need to change the name so it doesn't overwrite anything, but you can, while it's still working, go back to source and you can add other movies and TV shows to that. So here I've got like The Walking Dead, right? Uh, so we'll go ahead and open Walking Dead season three. All right, so it scanned everything and you can see we've got these three episodes. Season seven, episode 10, add to queue. Click the next one, add to queue. Click the next one, add to queue. And you see right here the queue, which you can uh, right here show queue, this button right here. Just automatically get to work to the next one. So yes, that is me. Ha! <laughs> Crazy, right? So the main reason why I choose to have my Blu-ray TV shows and some movies that maybe I don't care about too much downscale to 720p is mostly because it's faster, but also the resolution decrease saves a ton of space and it doesn't take away anything from the show or the movie itself. Most people don't have 5K monitors. We've got some people with 5K, some people with 4K, but most of you will have 1440p or 1080p screens. So anything from DVD to full HD is gonna look great either way. Plus, if, if you're gonna do this to rip your stuff to a media server and you're gonna watch it on your TV, it'll look even better because TVs render video files in a certain way that computer monitors don't. And you're sitting so far away from the TV that the resolution difference, you're probably not gonna notice it. And even if you do notice it, it won't matter because it's your favorite TV show anyways. Ultimately, it's up to you. I choose to do 720p, it's faster, it, looks, it still looks great, and it saves a ton of space. All right, we're gonna do a video test. So this is the, the different video files played back on a 5K screen filmed in 4K. So let's go.
So were you able to spot the difference? Let's watch them all side by side and go from there. All right, so video one was actually the high profile rip from Handbrake. 1080p, it took uh, almost three hours, and with a file size of 5.53 gigabytes, it's pretty good. But check out the next video. Video two was the Apple TV 3 preset, also 1080p. It only took two hours to record, and surprisingly, uh, also 5.53 gigabytes. I looked at the information, uh, the, the metadata and stuff within QuickTime, and uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. They're actually identical. So if you have to choose between the two, just choose Apple TV 3 because it takes way less time and they're identical. Video 3 was the black sheep of the group. Apple TV 2 at 720p took an hour and a half and was half the file size, less than half the file size, two and a half gigabytes. So that's pretty dang good. And of course, the very last one was the original MKV file, 1080p and ugh, 26 gigabytes. So if you couldn't tell the difference, maybe you should just stick to 720p. I think you're much better off with a two and a half gigabyte sized video as opposed to a 27 gigabyte file sized video. Okay, so you've ripped your disks, you've converted them to a smaller file size. Now you could be done and that would be totally fine, but you've made it this far. So let's just take it one extra step. Now, if you're using iTunes, Basically, you want to go into settings and make sure these two boxes are clicked. Keep iTunes media folder organized and copy files to iTunes media folder when adding to the library. Doing this simply makes it a lot easier to manage and keep track of all of your files, which just comes in handy. Although if you don't want to sync this stuff over to your iDevice or use iTunes as your media player, then you don't need to worry about this. Now, if you're not using iTunes, that's totally okay. Say you just wanna stick with VLC, you're gonna to have to organize all that stuff yourself. So find a, just create a folder and keep it somewhere, whether it's on your main hard drive or an external hard drive, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but let's add some metadata and just complete the circle. So once you have all of your TV episodes ripped over, you just need to rename them with the format, the name of the show, underscore, S1 for season one, and then E blank for episode whatever. And originally I used this app called iFlix, which was, oh, it's just the best dang metadata app ever. You could drag them all in, change all of the, the actors and the album art, the TV show rating, the movie rating, etc., and do it as a batch item all at once. Now I say you could do that and you, you still can do that, but they've updated the app and it's now a subscription-based service, which yuck. <laughs> so, but basically it just renders out and it automatically will add and copy over to iTunes. So what do you do if you don't want to pay a monthly subscription to add metadata? Well, that's where the app Subler comes in. So let's talk about that. So basically download Subler, install Subler, and oh, where'd it go? Bring open Subler. Now, nothing happened. So Subler is pretty different. Here it is down in the dock. Basically, you need to drag and drop files to it. So we'll go and open up a finder window. Here's my converted stuff. So Civil War. Oh yeah, baby. Okay. So uh so we've got Captain America, Geostorm. Let's just basically drag this down here to Subler. It's pretty simple. Now each video will pop up. The reason why I like iFlix so much is that you can just do a batch, do like 20 files all at once. Unfortunately for this one, you just gotta do it one at a time. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and it actually helps you to be more careful. So basically we'll click the search and we'll search for, or uh, you know, we're gonna use the English iTunes store. And here it is. And we'll just click add, downloading movie, downloading artwork. Oh. Now we can add all of this manually. So say if you make like a home video or you make a documentary or something that isn't on iTunes, you can actually add all this stuff yourself. Basically command S to save it, saving. And then you'll see here that it, the icon changed. Same thing with Geostorm, go search. Geostorm, oh, there it is, add. And now that they're both saved, you can just do command W to close the file. Don't do command Q, cause that'll quit the whole app. Uh, and now all we have to do is right click 
and we can actually like select everything once it's all saved. Right click, open with other iTunes, open. Alternatively, you could just drag and drop all the files onto the iTunes logo on the dock and that'll do the same thing. Now again, if you don't wanna use iTunes, this is, that's it, that's all you have to do. Drag it to Subler, find the video, add the metadata, command S to save it, and you're done. Copying one of one Geostorm, so so copying it makes another copy of it. So once this is done copying to iTunes, to iTunes' own hard drive, delete the original, and then you're done. Yay, and we're done. So it'll start auto-playing. We're gonna press escape because I don't wanna watch it right now. And pressing command tab there. Back to finder, and then just command delete. See you later. Got the HD badge, got the PG-13 badge, got the all the metadata, starring director, screenwriters, producers, the artwork everything and that's pretty cool unfortunately if you have a tv show there's probably one more step if you're ocd and you have to have it perfect so sometimes iflix and subler doesn't get the best album artwork so how do you change that well you can actually do it from within itunes itself and basically you press uh, command i on the media file and the tab will pop up click the second tab artwork and you can change it to whatever you want <laughs> but where can one get official iTunes artwork. Head over to this website, bendotson.com. He's got this freaking amazing algorithm that searches for all the TV shows, the movies, and I think some other stuff too, uh, for official artwork. So basically you'll search, you'll tell it what you're looking for. If you're looking for a movie art or a TV art, then you type in the name of the show or the movie and boom, there it is. And usually there's a standard resolution and a high resolution version. Of course, with my 5K display, I want that crispy high res stuff. So all you gotta do is save it to your downloads folder, click command I, go to the artwork tab, and drag and drop and click OK. And that's it. And let me tell you, having uniform artwork for all of the James Bond movies is amazing. Hooey! Finally, 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 we are done. So let's recap. So step one is to digitize your discs with Make MKV. Step two is to convert your movies with Handbrake to the resolution of your choice. Step three is to add metadata and yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it. It took me a couple of weeks stretched out over a couple of months to make everything. So I really appreciate the view. Thanks.